prices, can't the cabinet see they've got to be cuts? Well, they can see they've got to be cuts in other departments, not in their own. So this morning you ordered a clamp done? I can't order anything, darling. I'm only the Prime Minister. <laughs> You're in charge. No, I'm not. A leader can only lead by consent. Consensus. That's democracy. So who is in charge if you're not? Well, nobody, really. Oh. <laughs> it must be. That's what democracy is all about. And as if that weren't enough, I've got a deputation of MPs coming to see me this afternoon about a pay rise I promised them. What will you say? I shall say I deeply sympathise, which I don't. They fully deserve their money, which isn't true. <laughs> And that I shall make it my first priority as soon as the crisis is over, which I shan't. But if they go and vote themselves a whacking great pay rise and then tell everybody else there's no money for their pay rises, it doesn't do very much for the dignity of Parliament, which it doesn't. But aren't they underpaid, in fact? Underpaid? Backbench MPs, darling. Being an MP is a vast, subsidised ego trip. It's a job for which you need no qualifications, there are no compulsory hours of work, no performance standards, you get a warm room and subsidised meals for a bunch of self-opinionated windbags and busybodies. You suddenly find people taking them seriously because they've got the letters MP after their name. How can they be underpaid when there are about 200 applicants for every vacancy? You could fill every seat 20 times over, even if they had to pay to do the job. You were a backbench MP only five years ago. I was the exception. <laughs> I was the cream. I rose to the top. <laughs>